All right, so it's time for our DC circuit review. We're gonna talk about resistors with batteries and then more specifically about resistors and capacitors. We're gonna look a lot at the steady state uh, situation, which is you know a long time later, and also what happens immediately when you put together some capacitors and resistors. I don't expect them to have a lot of questions about what's happening in the middle on this year's test. So, and I think that that's something we talked about a little more in detail in class already. So what we're gonna start off with is this simple circuit right here. This is called the voltage divider. And the main reason why you've got a battery, two resistors, and these two resistors are gonna each get a portion of this voltage applied to them. This circuit would be useful if, say you had like a, a nine volt battery and maybe you were, I don't know, in the woods or something and you wanted to charge your smartphone. And so you needed to have like five volts or maybe you have like an electronic component like an LED or a light bulb that can only accept five volts. If you put more than five volts across this thing, it's gonna fry it, okay? So you could use a circuit like this, R1, R2, and this voltage. And so if you only had one resistor in here, if this was your light bulb, then it would get all the voltage from the battery. And it, it would have a nine volt battery and that might blow up your light bulb. So with this situation, some of the voltage get dissipated across the first resistor, some of the voltage gets dissipated across the second one. And so what we can look at, it's really, it's just two resistors in series, but it's called a voltage divider. And this is a way that we can think about whenever we see something with two resistors in series, it's pretty easy to figure out how much current, how much voltage in each of them. So to figure out the current, we could just do V over R if we can combine these together into a single effective resistance of R1 plus R2, then we would get that the current through the circuit is V over R1 plus R2. So if we were to go through and do the analysis that way, you could get there. And so that's the current through the whole circuit. If we wanted to figure out what the voltage across just this component is, it would be V is equal to IR. So it would be the current, which would be uh, V over R1 plus R2 times R2. So the voltage across this is gonna be equal to this voltage times the ratio of this resistance to the total resistance. The voltage across this one is gonna be this voltage times this number over the whole thing. So if we put in numbers for this, if this was like nine volts, this was uh, let's say four ohms, five ohms, or four kilo ohms, five kilo ohms, then this one would have gotten four of the nine volts. This one would have gotten five of the nine volts. If they were both equal, they would each get half of the voltage across them. So this is a way that we can split up or lower the voltage on a single component from a battery, and it's just proportional. So if this one's three times bigger than this one, if R1 was equal to three times R2, then this would have three quarters of the voltage across it. This one would have one quarter of the voltage across it. So that's just sort of the a general way to think about those kinds of problems. I'm gonna go ahead and add on a capacitor into this circuit as well. All right, so here we have a capacitor added on and I put on a switch. So if this thing was just running on its own, we would just get current going through there, it would get split between these two resistors. But if this capacitor is empty, not charged up, and we close that switch, then what's gonna happen is the voltage across this capacitor is zero right at the beginning because it hasn't charged up yet, there's no charge on it. So that means this voltage is zero and these two are in parallel and anything that's in parallel has to have the same potential across it. It's because if we went around a loop here, we would go, you know, change by zero. Going across this, we would have to change by zero as well so that we get back to the same voltage we started at. And so looking at Kirchhoff loop rule, we know that two things in parallel have to have the same voltage. And so in this case, the voltage across this would be zero, and so if we went around this loop, we would go up by V, down by V, so that we can go down by zero again to get back to this. So at the very beginning, when we first close this switch, this capacitor acts as if it's a short circuit, a wire, a switch that's just closed, just like a wire. And so the current will go through here and it'll go around this path instead at the beginning. It won't go through this resistor because that's gonna try and block it. And as we keep going forward, uh, as time goes on and on and on, this, acts much more like the way I've drawn it here with an open circuit. So it's a switch that's open. So for capacitors, you can kind of think of at the beginning, they were kind of like a switch that's closed. And at the end, they're kind of like a switch that's open. So we'll just open it up. 
this whole part of the circuit's gone, and it's just like the way we just analyzed it before. So let's take a look at a slightly more complicated circuit. This one I haven't labeled the names of things, but we'll call this kind of V1, R1, R2, and R3, and this is our capacitance, our capacitor in this case. And so <clears throat> for this one, we'll think about what happens at the beginning, okay? So at the very beginning, current flows here. It has to go through this resistor. All current must go through this resistor. And at the beginning, we said, a capacitor acts like a closed switch. So I'm gonna just replace it with a switch the way that I think about this. So now we got this, it's basically the same drawing. We've got a, the battery pumping current through R1, and then it's got a choice which way to go, if it wants to go down through R2 or through R3. So basically these two are in parallel. And so we can just analyze this like we would any other resistor network. We've got a resistor in series with two in parallel. So we would add these two like we add any parallel resistors, and then we could add this one on like we add a series resistor. We could find the current at the beginning that way because this capacitor acts like a closed switch. So it's just like a wire, and we're just analyzing it with resistors. Now, a long time later, this acts like a open switch. No more current can go into this capacitor because it's at capacity, it's full up. So, we act like it's an open switch like this, which means no current is allowed to flow through this. No current is allowed to flow through this one either because these two are in series. So that tells us that what's gonna happen here, we're gonna get current only going in this loop and look at that, that's another voltage divider. We're back to the same thing, just two resistors in series and we can figure out very quickly what's going on with the current at that point. So these are some of the techniques that we can use when we're analyzing circuits at the beginning and at the end, we can do our parallel and series networks of resistors. And you basically just kind of say, well, if the capacitor is uncharged, then this is what's gonna happen. But, oh, one thing I did want to mention here is that uh, at the end of this circuit, once this is fully charged up, then you can kind of look at a loop, like this loop right here. And if we if we go around this loop, uh, I guess I'll, I'll start, start out here, okay? And if I go up through this, I'm gonna gain voltage as I go across this resistor because current's flowing down through it. So this is gonna be the higher potential. So I'm gonna go up by some voltage. So that'd be like VR2 or whatever, you know, this resistor's voltage. So we go up that, that's what we get. Then we go across here and we said at the end, there's no current in this resistor. So if we were to write our loop rule, and I'm gonna actually just write this right here uh, so we can see this one written out. All right, so here's what we've got here. We've got that zero. So starting from here and going around this loop uh, in this direction, we go up by I2, R2, whatever the current is in I2 times R2, which current is pointing downwards in this one. That's why it's a positive sign here. And that's gonna be equal to the voltage across this resistor minus I3, R3, and we said there's no current flowing through this. So that's equal to zero minus the change in potential across this capacitor. And this capacitor has a capacitance of C. And so these two, this minus that has to be equal to zero. So that tells you that this voltage is equal to that resistor voltage right there. And so if these resistors change and the voltage across this resistor gets bigger, that would mean the voltage across the capacitor gets bigger. If we got rid of this resistor, then this resistor and the battery would be in parallel, so they would have the same voltage, and then this resistor and the capacitor would have the same voltage. So this sort of voltage divider at the front makes it so that the capacitor doesn't get the full voltage of the battery, but something less. So we'll kind of look through these kinds of ideas, these sorts of approaches. Uh, if you're still a little confused on this, reach out to me and we can talk these through. We're gonna have a little more practice with circuits and some electrostatics coming up. Thanks guys.